Hey everyone, well, we are painting pansies this week. And this week too, I thought it would be fun to create a note card and envelope set. So join with me as I use just a couple of colors, purple and a bit of pink and blue, I'm sorry, not blue, green and yellow and create these really fun cards and envelope sets in less than 15 minutes to send out in the mail. Hi everyone. Well, today we're painting pansies. We are going to do something a little bit different. We are def we're creating a little card. We're creating a watercolor card on a four by six paper. I am using the Artist Loft paper today. Um, I have actually a new palette with the colors that we're using um, because my old palette actually broke, if you can believe it. So we're not using the blue today, but we're using permanent rose. We're using um, purple, the dioxazine purple, some hookers green, and then some cadmium. This is actually lemon yellow and gamboge, and I am mixing them a bit. But if you have a cadmium yellow medium, that would work really nice too. I also have a envelope and I have sketched a little pansy face onto that. And that's the new thing. We're creating a card. So I will actually end up, I actually have some coffee dripping on that card. So that's cute. Um, but I'll end up writing a Mother's Day note on the back and then just giving my mom this, slipping this in the mail for her for Mother's Day. Um, it is pansies or my mom's favorite flower. And I, in the intro, I showed her pansies that she's growing. Aren't they gorgeous? They're absolutely beautiful. So let's go ahead and start painting together. I'm gonna to come in just a little bit so you can get a little bit more of a close up. You can see what I was drawing earlier. Um, these are lovely. That's kind of what we're emulating today. That was one I decided to go with. And so what I'm gonna do, I don't have it masked down today because we're not doing a ton of heavy painting, but I'm gonna go ahead and start with some of my yellow flowers are my, yeah, my yellow centers are sweet little pansy faces. So I'm gonna just, I'm not gonna paint all the way in. And I'm actually gonna dab in a little bit of gamboge just for the sake of a little bit of a, um, just a different color to get, make it bounce a little bit more. You'll also notice that their faces are almost kind of like rounded triangles, at least the ones in my mom's yard. I was looking on Pinterest, there's tons, you can do some research, tons of different kinds of pansies with sweet different faces. I'm gonna go ahead and create a yellow base for my stems and you know pansies have such a, I'm gonna come in a little bit closer here so you can see this even better. They have such a short stem that I kind of imagine this little um, bouquet of pansy flowers for my mom is actually in like a custard cup, right? Because it's so, very, they're such short flowers as far as their length goes. And there's the stem for this guy, which I have coming up right here. And I'm gonna let that dry. Now I'm using a pretty short brush. I'm using like a two, a size, or actually this is even a size one. It's really tiny, partially because it's small, but also I wanna really um, blend in my colors nice. And I wanna make sure I don't hit the yellow because that will kind of mess up that clear face. Now I am gonna end up switching over to bigger brush but one of the things I want to point out as I'm painting around here I'm just going to go on the edges I am going to use a pink but you'll notice that pink is not the star of the show I'm really using pink I'm using that permanent pink it's going to um, add in some depth of color so we don't have just a straight a straight solid line because that wouldn't be any good right so I'm going to get this somewhat wet in here so this is my first flower down here not letting it touch that yellow. And then I'm gonna come, I'm gonna go ahead and grab my pink and I'm gonna move, I'm gonna start moving that in. And then I'm gonna go ahead, now I know the pink is showing up strong in here, but it's only gonna be for a quick second because what I'm gonna do is again take that larger brush, I'm gonna grab the purple and then come back in here and letting that paint, get a lot of paint on your brush start to really seep it. Now don't color the whole thing in. Make sure there's you're leaving some spots for um, the paint to create that, that white to show out, right? Now that's a pretty big brush, so I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna get close to the yellow, but I'm not gonna come too near it. I'm gonna move in here, and then I'm gonna set that, this back down. I'm gonna go back to that small brush, and then once again, I'm moving over here. I'm leaving some space too, so we can see the different petals. And I am moving fairly fast. You could do the whole thing with this small brush too if you wanted. So I can even come back here, add a little bit of pink, get close to the yellow, but not touch it. This particular brush, I have some extra little br bristles sticking out, which I need to, 
I need to fix that. I could even start with the pink down here. Again, we're looking at just adding out that pop and the violets are the pansies in my mom's garden. They're like a really vivid purple. It's a bright purple. It is not a dull purple or a matte purple or even an eggplant purple whatsoever. It is really a bright purple. So that's why I'm using um, the pink as to kind of create that really spring bounce to it. Again, you can look at other pansies though, and there's all sorts of different kinds of purples. Um, there's maroons, a lot of, again, not bright reds, but almost like a crimson red. And so you can kind of look and see what are growing in your garden or your neighbor's garden. And I am just gonna move around here. You'll notice again, I'm not getting too close to that yellow. Let me move this out just a little bit so you can start to see how it looks as well. Moving back just a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna keep on moving here. In that with that purple. And continuing around. Around and around, very nice. Okay, so again, I'm gonna looking at not creating everything in too, too much, too convoluted, right? I don't want everything in. I'm gonna move fairly close to this yellow because it is drying a bit. I'm gonna grab that pink and blend that in here. We do now need to go in and do a few things. We need to create the, the vase. I'm just doing almost like a pinky water. I didn't want to add in another color, so I decided just to keep it pink. And then we're gonna have add in some shadowing on our little vase here and on the ground. Okay, so again, these are pretty simple. And I'm leaving space here too if I wanted to write something to my mom around the borders. And that might be something fun to do. And maybe this isn't for your mom, maybe it's for a friend or um, a mentor. Okay, let's go ahead and do the shadowing that with this. I'm gonna go ahead and grab that yellow. Oh, my sound is on my phone. Let me turn that off. My memory has been going out of my phone. You know, I swear that sometimes with the phone and that's a bit too intense, I wanna block that. You can keep your phones for like a couple years and then they just kind of go kerplunk on you as far as if there's not enough memory. I've already upgraded, I don't wanna upgrade again. I think I'm full of my, I have so many pictures. I really just need to clean out pictures. How many of us just, right? We just have to clean out some pictures. All right, okay, but coming back to what we're doing today. So see how this is nice and yellow. I'm gonna add a bit of purple. Purple is opposite on the color wheel and that makes it a great shadow color for the yellow. So if you ever wanna create some shadowing and you have like a yellow, background or a bottom, you want to add in a little bit of purple to create that sense of shadow. And I'm going to do that right here. And I'm going to do a little bit of shadow against the backdrop and just, just a little bit more. And if you ever thought to yourself, gosh, that's too much, just add a little bit more yellow. You want the darkest part of the shadow, of course, to be right up close to the bottom of the vase or the coffee cup or whatever you're painting, right? Okay, so now that I have that, that looks nice. I do wanna put a little bit of pink. I've got my pink. I'm gonna get a little bit of a wash in there. And now I, that's actually too dark. I'm just gonna get some water with another brush and come in and just move that around. And coming over here. And you can see I'm not touching, so there is some blank spots left. I'm not bothered about that. I'm gonna go up to the ridge up here where it would be look darker, right? Because that's where all the shadowing would be. And I'll paint my red ridge, and then I'll move this down. And also imagining that the light's gonna be bouncing off a few places too. Coming close, but not touching the stems. And then just that sensation of, of look, there might be, there is um, water. And I'm gonna do the back of the vase or the little cup. It's my little custard cup as well. And then come back over here again. And then maybe a little bit at the bottom and maybe one of the sides, just to give it a little pop. It will not dry so dark. Remember, watercolor always dries 
a bit lighter than you put it on. And we'll just pretend there's we're gonna, that this is kind of where the light was coming, was coming over this way, so we've got more shadowing over there. So in that case too, since my shadows are gonna go that way, I am gonna take some yellow, bring it over here, pull this out on this side, and pull those shadows over here. So you see how I'm doing that, and just kind of pulling out the shadows this way. So they are going the opposite, because I had them a little bit out this way, and that looked kind of funny if the darker, if the light's coming in over here. So I'm gonna come back too with my paper towel and I can just blot that off a bit and that will look too. The light's lighter over here because there's more light being diffused and there's more shadows over here. Okay, now to finish up, we're almost done. I wanna add just a little bit more purple over here. Again, we're right down here, just let it saturate a bit, a little bit more pink that real vivid color that I love. Just a little bit down here, not tons. We're not gonna really do any splattering today. Go ahead and even out my background here of my water. There we go, so that looks nice and even now. If you notice too, you have some pink in your green stems, not a big deal, just dab that off. With your paper towel, I'm going to go back in with my green and I'm going to go back here. We're going to pull that down here and I'm going to come over here and pull this down too. Nice and green. Okay, isn't that cute? I think that looks really, really sweet. I'm going to come in so you can see that a little bit closer, then come back out. And the last thing we want to do, we want to go ahead and paint our pansy over here. So our pansy here, I'm going to come back in. Oh, I had some green on there. So we're going to, now this is not watercolor paper, so I'm going to do very lightly. If I saturate it, it's just going to go through. I am going to go ahead and add in a few of those stems that I saw in my mom's flower. I'm using very, the smallest number one paintbrush because I don't want to saturate it because it will just soak and I'm gonna go ahead and just lay down some purple. Real light, you can see too how the paper kind of just eats it up because it's a different kind of, that watercolor paper um, is not so absorbable. Regular envelopes, it's just gonna absorb and that's fine. We're really just doing a bit of a sketch, right? It just comes something fun for your snail mail. I'm almost kind of just going real casually with this, almost like I'm running a, um, a sketch pencil, pencil around and we'll add a little bit of pink here in just a minute. But just to give the sense of a little bit of celebration, just a little bit of sneak peek of what it's inside, this is not a bill, is what this outside decor says. This is not a bill, this is a really fun piece of art inside and a happy message, whether it's a Mother's Day message or it's a birthday card for a friend or just a note to brighten someone's day. And you can see too, that just this is taking us less than 15 minutes to create this really sweet card and envelope set, which is just really fun. Now you'll notice my yellow's fading a bit. I'm gonna pick up some gamboge. We're just gonna pop it in there, add in a little bit more yellow, take that green, add a little bit over there, keep it fancy, some fancy edges here. I love it. Now I might, maybe, maybe, a little bit of splatters on this, on the envelope. So maybe I'll just do, for fun, some splatters over here, which of course means, okay, maybe we will do some splatters. I wasn't going to. I just wanted the envelope to look a little bit more congruent. If you want to add splatters onto your painting, maybe just some here at the top if you want to. Just some purple over there, and also maybe some green would look really, really pretty. I'm going to add in some green. Again, we're using that number one brush so everything stays nice and clean. All right, that looks really pretty. And you can see with this one, there's no splatters. It's more of just a solid painting. And that looks really nice too. All right, our beautiful, our pretty pansies, right? Our very pretty pansies, our coordinating pansy and envelope set. Let me peek at the time. We are less than, we are just at 14 minutes. I love that. This is going to be such a cute card. Wait for it to completely dry before you address it. And you have time to get it ready right before um, 
Mother's Day or again that special birthday. All right, you guys, I'll talk to you soon.